think it's me. He's playing guitar here. Welcome to our living room. It's a song I composed for this guitar uh, a long time ago called Fair Winds at Twilight. Uh -huh. So the last song on the album came out 15 years ago called Between Two Worlds. Ouch. So that guitar. This guitar, yes. This is made by Lorenzo Pimentel. Pimentel. He, Pimentel. He's out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And many, many years ago, we were at the Folk Alliance Conference down there. And, and I had bought a couple guitars earlier from him, one for my brother Frank, and then I had played uh, played another uh, student model. And so I just wanted to go and visit, and they, I called over there and they said, yeah. And so we came over and they had a, a beautiful showroom and they showed me uh, up around the uh, workshop. And then uh, I was just playing some of the guitars here. And this particular one, uh, apparently that this was built for Badi Assad, but if you look closely, there was a uh, crack that developed in it before they even sold it. Can yeah, you see that? Yeah, who's Badi Assad? Badi Assad is an artist out of uh, South America, I think, uh, Argentina. I'm not positive. Uh, but um, she's a, a, a very popular artist down there, and uh, she liked the guitar, I guess, but uh, they didn't want to sell it with this crack in it, so they, they made her a she's new a one. She's a classical guitarist, right? I think she's a singer and, and, and kind of a... Pop, pop guitars, but I don't know for sure, so I guess we'll have to Google that. But, um, so this the the strings here are kind of tied on. Is this, is that's right, this, that's typical for a classical guitar. So, this is a classical guitar, yes. The only difference is many classical guitars don't have this cutaway in them, but this is a Venetian cutaway, Venetian and cutaway, Venetian yeah. cutaway right? because it's it's rounded. That's why it's just that. pimento on. Yeah, it's Pimentel. And um, this guitar was, the highs on it were so brilliant. Yeah, I remember this. Usually on a classical guitar of moderate value, the highs are okay, but they don't jump out the way they do on, on, uh, on this one. This one is just... It's got some pretty deep lows, too. It's, well, it's really got nice voice guitar. And plus, all the notes are there, too. It's very, very balanced. I mean, it was a beautiful guitar. And what was amazing is I was playing this. Uh, you said, you ought to buy that guitar. And I went like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> and so we did. You already had a guitar, but yeah, you well, bought another it one. Was a, it was a really, really nice guitar. So, I mean, it's Well, a, you know, this is different from your other guitars. And there's several mm -hmm. reasons why it's different. And one of them is... Um, because it's a classical. That's right. It doesn't have steel strings. Nope. That has a different tone to it. It's a, uh, and I've used See, this in the studio. Those are nylon strings, right? They're nylon strings. Some of those strings, the bass strings are wound. What are they wound They're wound. With? Uh, they're silver wound. Uh, they used to be like uh, wound on silk, but I think the cores now are, are a, a type of a filament, you know, type of a nylon. Mm -hmm. but they're silver and these particular strings are Hannah box as well so mm -hmm. uh, they last a, a long time called pure carbons mm -hmm. so that's their uh, advertisement mm -hmm. and uh, so, as you can mm -hmm. see is it Pimentel and Sons I don't know if you can see that or not and this guitar is built in 1997 so uh, hold on hold it still for a second there I'll do what I can yeah okay mm-hmm so it's a it's a, a a very very nice guitar, a much better classical guitar than the classical player playing. So it. when you play all your classical tunes like Bach and stuff, you play them all on classical guitar. Usually on steel string. 
usually on steel string. I pick this up every once in a while just if I want a different sound. Uh, and, and also, the, the, you might notice, especially when I show the other ones, that this neck is pretty wide, and that's what you're going to find typical on a classical guitar. Plus, the fretboard is flat, so, uh, whereas the other ones, they're curved a little bit. So it's uh, really designed for precision playing. <laughs> and precision playing is not always my, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a precise player, but, but it's much more difficult to play it on a classical than because it just takes more. <laughs> I love this cut, this angle here. So you got about oh, yeah. a size 25 shoe on here right now. Yeah, bozo shoes. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not the bozo guitar, but this no, it's not, not no. the time to talk no, about no, that. No, we'll talk uh, about that. Okay. So but that's a classical. This, yeah, the, my classical guitar. It's a, it's a beautiful guitar. Now, so are you going to show me how it sounds different from something else? Well, yeah. I'm going to play this guitar here. This is a guitar that has an interesting history. It's not very old. It was made... Oh, it's uh, pretty. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful guitar. Made by Santa Cruz Guitar Company. Um, and I was in a guitar shop over in Michigan uh, quite a few years ago. And I started playing this guitar. Not this one, but one like it. Um, and... Uh, it's uh, I played it and it's it had such a beautiful bass bass like tone a rich tone to it almost like a cello you know and I was playing a, a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach called Arioso and uh, I was playing it and a friend of mine came in a, a actually a pretty well known uh, folk DJ called Bob Blackman came in. Oh yeah, and, hi Bob. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, you know, just listening. He said, "Boy, that guitar sounds really good." And I said, "Yeah, it does." And then I noticed that it was a baritone guitar. I'd been playing it for 15 minutes without even realizing it because typically, baritone guitars they have bigger strings, they're harder to play. And I'd been playing this thing for like 15 minutes, and, and I didn't even realize it. But listen to that tone. What's that tune called? Like That's called Arioso. So is that a classical right. song? A classical by Johann Sebastian Bach. I think it was in one of the the uh, passions that he composed. Um, but this so. is not a classical guitar. It's not. No, it's a baritone guitar. It's a steel string. Um, the top is German spruce, and of course they put a really nice uh, so this is sunburst steel on it. String. This is what I'm used to seeing yeah. on the ends of guitars, just these right. little the pins. Buttons, the pins here. No. But the other one, the strings were wrapped on that yeah, one. Yeah, they, they were tied on. Um, and uh, this is a, a German spruce top. They put a nice uh, sunburst on it for me because uh, I had this guitar built for me. Um, and then um, the back and sides are made out of Hawaiian koa. And it's the most, the that's, match that's, grain. That's, mm -hmm. uh, most astounding koa grain I've ever seen in my life. It's and, pretty. Uh, even the, the Tobias Music that ordered it for me, uh, Paul Tobias said, no, that, that grain is just nuts. And, uh, and it is. It's uh, it's beautiful. It's good, good sounding. What is interesting is I've played a few other baritone guitars that made out of Indian rosewood, and they sounded very good, but they didn't have quite the definition in the bass notes. You listen to this note here, and it doesn't wobble at all. It, it's, it's right there. It's precise. Sometimes if you get... Um, uh, a, a, a guitar that has more um, bass end of it, it, it that'll sound muddy. And this is very, very precise. And that's the nice thing about koa, is in the lower tones, it's a little bit more accurate than rosewood. Rosewood might color it a little bit more. And so, uh, but this is a this is a nice guitar. It's a, almost the most recent guitar I've had. Certainly, it's a, uh, 
the guitar that was built for me most recently. So it's a, it's a really a privilege. And speaking of guitars being built for me, what is this? This was made by Scott Kurting, or Scotty as we called him. And uh, back in 1982, the uh, economy went down for carpenters. Um, also for farmers too, but and so he was in between jobs, and he was building, he was building a, a hammer dulcimers. He was really inspired. Scott Curding was, um, he is still the poster boy for the Fox Valley Folk That's Festival program. Right. If you see the drawing on the, yeah. on the cover of that, that is a drawing of Scott, and it was done by his wife Pat Curding, Pat. Right. and. Um, Scotty's been gone for a long time. Yes, he has. The thing that amazed me about this guitar was that, um, first of all, that was 1980s, early 1980s. That was when we all discovered the hammer dulcimer. Yes, right. And Scott picked it up and he just started playing tunes on it. Yes, he did. And I was just mystified. And then he started making them. <laughs> yeah, and then he started making them, and I thought, oh, well, these will sound really crappy. But first. they sounded beautiful. They yeah. sounded beautiful. And so he tried, he, since he'd been playing guitar for quite a while, he tried to build a few guitars, and he built them pretty well. Um, this one was very interesting because we, we went at, to um, pick out the top, which is made out of a western red cedar, and we picked that out of the pile of wood that Edward Hyde's Lumber Company had. In St. Charles. Mm -hmm. So we went to a lumber yard and picked the wood up for the top of the guitar. And then the back and sides uh, is made out of American black walnut that uh, he and I went up to another uh, lumber yard in Elgin called Geister Brothers. You go up to the third floor, that's where they had all their hardwood at that time. And you know, you're kind of 30 feet above the floor in these single boards, and you're kind of going up and down and the boards are kind of given under your feet and you kind of go like, I'm going to keep my feet right on the joists. But, <laughs> but um, we picked that out here, beautiful uh, quarter sawn walnut. And uh, then the, the neck was made out of cherry with a, with a uh, maple uh, lamination in the middle of it to give it some strength. Um, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, he that's did pretty. did beautiful work. I mean, so you this, didn't age this wood or anything. Don't most guitar player makers pick out their wood and then let it sit for two or three years? Or well, something? well, yeah, but the, the funny thing about this lumber, the the western red cedar lumber, that pile had been there for a long time, <laughs> and the same thing with this walnut. But it had been sitting there forever. You guys didn't and, really know anything about picking out wood for guitars. Well, he knew a lot more than I did. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. um, and and then uh, we got some. Uh, well, this is I don't know if you can see it too well, but this is a uh, piece of uh, veneer, and it's a walnut burl, and it's the same on the headstock. Okay, mm -hmm. we were kind of inspired by a guy named Irving Sloan because he did, he did that type of thing on on oh, one of his guitars. Books or something. He, he had a, a book on guitar building, mm -hmm. and then um, the fretboard and bridge are ebony, so it's African. But everything else is domestic. It's all from North America, and he even bound the um, guitar in birch. Wow, that's a lot it's of different all, kinds of wood. All different kinds of wood. He knew a lot more about woods than we thought. So yeah. this was what, his third or fourth guitar that he ever built? Number six. Number this six. was number six. How many did he make total? Uh, maybe 14. Yeah. yeah, he didn't make too many. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons why is because, um, it's, and it's a little bit in the weeds here, but the way, typically a guitar like this is made so that the neck can be taken off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this guitar, the sides actually go into the neck. It's called a Spanish heel. Mm -hmm. So the neck and the neck block mm -hmm. all fit together mm -hmm. and the sides go into it. Mm -hmm. And Scott said, that's, let's make it that way. And so that's what he did. Mm -hmm. he, uh, the neck continues on into the inside. The mm -hmm. sides go into it like this. So if the neck ever warps, then you, the guitar is no good anymore. Yeah, but you make it right in the first place. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we had a problem with, though, and why he stopped building, was there was a, a crack here that developed, if mm -hmm. you can see that crack. Mm -hmm. And the reason why there was a crack there is because end grain loses and gains moisture 
mm -hmm. uh, quicker than on the side. And mm -hmm. this end grain was unsealed inside. Mm -hmm. So I waited till it uh, closed back up in the summertime when it, everything swelled up. And we finished off the inside of that and didn't move, it hadn't moved since. Hmm. You know, and uh, you know, but by that time, uh, Scott had gone on, you know, doing some other things like building these fabulous houses, and they actually uh, added on, and they, re they redid our kitchen too. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, give us but, a song. Yeah, this is a, uh, the bottom end on this is just magnificent. And the highs are really nice too. So I, I'm, I, I'm going to play the first instrumental piece I ever figured out coming back from Iceland in 1974 and uh, by Errol Garner called Misty. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening and coming into our home.